Our scripture this morning comes from 1 John 3, 1 through 7. And what you see on your screen is going to be the same thing in your pew Bibles from the Common English Version. So 1 John 3, 1 through 7. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, and that we should be called, called God's children. And that is what we are. Because the world didn't recognize him, it doesn't recognize us. Dear friends, now we are God's children, and it hasn't yet appeared what we will be. We know that when he appears, we will be like him, because we'll see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure. Every person who practices sin commits an act of rebellion, and sin is rebellion. You know that he appeared to take away sins, and there is no sin in him. Every person who remains in relationship to him does not sin. Any person who sins has not seen him or known him. Little children, make sure no one deceives you. The person who practices righteousness is righteous, in the same way that Jesus is righteous. Here ends the reading. Spirit of God, stir up your people. I'm not sure we often read from the epistles of John, which is, which is what we read from this morning. First John, second John, those. Um, but they focus on the love of God. John Wesley actually once said that the first epistle of John, the one we read from this morning, is the sum of the whole gospel. John Wesley said, it's summed up by saying, we love God because God first loved us. So keep that in mind as we work through our sermon this morning. We love God because God first loved us. Now, last time I preached at Broadway, we talked about the responsibilities of being a child of God. And ironically enough, the scripture for this morning also talked about being a child of God. When I gave Alexis and Teresa my sermon title a few weeks ago, I kind of thought it sounded familiar, and then I got preparing and, and working on this sermon, I went, oh yeah, this is kind of the same thing we talked about. But we're going to take a little different spin on things this morning. I promise you're not going to get the same sermon. But in case you missed that Sunday, it was back in January, when we preached on the talked about being a child of God, I'll give you a quick overview. So here's your synopsis. Are you ready? We talked about how because we are children of God, we are God's heirs. And as God's heirs, we inherit several privileges, right? Because we're an heir of God, we get to call God Father and have an intimate relationship with God and talk to God whenever we want. It also means we can ask for God's help and advice and strength. Just simply share our joys and concerns and life with God. And lastly, it means that we have the assurance that we are loved unconditionally and have everlasting life. But being a child or heir of God, we also have responsibilities that come with that. It means we have to suffer for Christ and work at a relationship with him by coming to church, reading our Bible, working on our prayer life, and being involved in small groups. It means we can't be selfish. We have to share God with others. And most importantly, we have to have an abundance mindset. So last time I stood in front of you, those are the things we talked about, in case you missed it. It happens, right? Today, however, we're going to take another look at what it means to be a child of God. The scripture this morning that we read together reminds me of how completely misunderstood Jesus was and how differently he saw things. And honestly, how differently probably we still see things from the way Jesus does. The scripture today said, because the world didn't recognize him, it doesn't recognize us. As a Christian, have you ever felt completely misunderstood? I know I have. There are people who don't understand why I give so much of my time and my resources to the church, why I invest so much of myself into the church. Sometimes the things we do as Christians, the things I mentioned we should be doing as children of God, they're so counterintuitive to the world and the way the world works. You know, there are a lot of Christian songs that talk about how out of place Christians often feel in the world, or how it always feels like there's something missing on earth. There's a Christian artist, a singer and songwriter, Wayne Kerr, that has a song entitled, Not Home Yet. Now you may or may not have heard of Wayne Kerr. He's not as famous as some of the artists that we hear on the radio stations, but growing up as a youth in Missouri and helping organize United Methodist youth events, 
we loved Wayne Kerr. He was one of our favorites. And we always called him Wayne Kerr, right? It wasn't just like Wayne or Mr. Kerr or just Kerr, you know, like some of the, did you have Reba? We never just called him by one name. We literally always said Wayne Kerr. He was young and he was hip, he was energetic, and he was great with our audiences, whether we had a youth audience of 100 people or 1,000 people, he was wonderful. And for being honest, most of us had a crush on him, so that didn't hurt anything either, but th that didn't mean he wasn't still great. Go back to his song. It describes how out of place he felt. And I bet it echoes how we've often felt. The lyrics state, this is not my home. I feel it in my bones. Part of another land I belong. Somehow I've always known that this is not my home. Just like a singer who's missing a song far beyond the sea, past where my eyes can dream. Some that I love have already gone. There is another place where I will see your face. The only light they'll need is you. Hallelujah. This is not my home. This is not my home. Long, long after I'm gone, will they say I was a taker, or did I give it all away like you did? I believe those lyrics are spot on. I feel it in my bones. Have you ever felt it in your bones that this is not your home? I mean, I bet Jesus did, right? He was completely and repeatedly misunderstood. He spent three years with the disciples. And even up until the Last Supper, they didn't get it, right? Like, they just were clueless. And then after the resurrection, they actually thought somebody stole Jesus. They just didn't get it after spending three years with him. I can't imagine how frustrated Jesus was, how often he felt misunderstood. But he knew, he knew most importantly that he was a child of God, and that was what really mattered. So with this in mind, I suppose it's natural for us to feel out of place, to feel not at home. Or maybe a better question is, if we really and truly feel at home here, what are we missing? Have we traded God's ideas for the world's? You know, the world doesn't look at things like Christians do. And maybe, as Christians, we don't always look at things like Jesus does. We're talking about being children of God, but let's just think a minute about our own families, the ones we were raised in. We're essentially brought up with our parents' views, right? Views about society, views about how the world works, whether or not things are fair or not, views about politics. And we often take some of these views with us, and we form our own views and opinions based on our own experiences, right? Sometimes we're very much like the families who raised us, and other times we're quite the opposite. We see what we grew up with, and we're not willing to, to accept all those views and opinions, right? But if we're children of God, we should definitely take God's viewpoint of things, right? I believe it bears worth repeating. The world doesn't look at things like Christians do. And maybe we don't always look at things like Jesus does. But we should. I've been on a song kick lately, so I apologize, but I'm going to share another one with you. Honestly, I believe songs sometimes say things much more concisely than we can any other way. This is a Scott Crepane song called What Breaks Your Heart. It states, Want to get to know you better. I want to understand what matters to you. I want to know what moves you deeply. I want to see the world the way that you do. What breaks your heart? What makes you cry? What would I see if I looked through your eyes? I want to grow closer and closer to you, till what breaks your heart will break mine too. Don't want to be numb to injustice. Don't want to get used to the evil I see. Don't want to grow cold to those who wonder or forget about those who don't believe. Sometimes you weep with us in the things that we go through. I long for tenderness so that I might weep with you. You know, there's no way that I can look at the world 
and not see God, especially right now, right? When it's springtime and life is blooming and budding all around us. But there's also no way that I can look at the world and realize that there are so many things that break God's heart. We're children of God. We can't feel right at home in this crazy, often dysfunctional world. It's our job as children of God to be God's hands and feet, to help make the world a better place, and to not break God's heart every chance we get. We can't do that alone, right? We know that. We know we need each other. We know we need community. We have been chosen by God, handpicked to be his children. We are loved beyond measure. We can't believe the sorry facts of our broken lives or the broken world we live in, because this isn't our home. We must live in the light of love and know that that love will conquer everything. We must be a community that speaks out against injustice, that shows compassion to all, and be a community that offers hope in a world who so desperately needs it. As children of God, we must love and be loved. We must remember that we know the end. We know that grace is greater than sin and that love wins. So long, long after we're gone, will they say we're takers or that we gave it all away like Jesus did? Let's give it all away. Thanks be to God. Amen.